I wanted to be functioning in a space that was a, a learning tool. I mean, we spend lots of money on math books or whatever like that. Why don't we spend it on, on places that become functional classrooms, that become these laboratories that kids interact with in such a way that the space itself is learning. I've been doing a bunch of writing, I call it transparent educational design, where the space that you're in can teach you about it just by going to the bathroom or by looking at a hole in the wall and going, oh, that's how this place is put together, or, or being able to figure out how the building is heated, or all those kind of basic things that I think a lot of folks take for granted. We don't know where water comes from or how the building is heated. And those are always these systems that are away or in the basement or whatever. And when you connect kids with those places and all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's how this, this works. And then they start asking questions, well, how does it work in other places? And so uh, we generate curiosity with a space like this. And we, we have the ability for kids to interact with and use the building as as a, as a tool, as a laboratory, and we can say, well, last month we generated this much energy, we used this much, how are we going to, you know, we used more than we should have, or you know, how are we going to accommodate that, how are we going to rectify those kinds of issues, and, and so we start interacting with the space that we're in, and we start being a little bit more personally accountable. Permaculture is a design methodology. Permaculture is an assembly tool. So, if I'm going to do a permaculture design for a site or talk about permaculture around a site, I'm going to take a look at all the elements that are there. And permaculture is much more interested in what are the connections between all those elements than what elements there are. It's about taking a look at what technology are we using. Are we using uh, technology for technology's sake? Are we using you know, some potentially appropriate technology? Are we learning things from the natural environment and using that as a model. It might be totally appropriate to have a solar panel in our, or, an, or a pump or a um, lawnmower or whatever it might be. Um, all the parts are part of the system. It's, but is there, are, are there biological methods that we could use rather than mechanical? So we could have a fancy uh, thermostat heat system in the greenhouse that measured the heat and mechanically opened all those windows for us. And that would take power and it's another system that would break and more maintenance and all that. Or we could have this temperature sensitive beeswax that does it all by itself. A big part of the curriculum here is how do kids interact with the system. And do kids understand systems to the point that if they were put into a new system they would be able to ask the right questions. That's the real test for me. Um, we can all learn the, the memorize the list of everything that's here and that's that's great but when we really start to understand the relationships between all of those parts then we have a much better tool in our pocket to be able to go and start looking at other things oh well here it did this and we studied it and this is how it all worked we can actually make places get better with use which is fairly contradictory to most Western development most places that we're at are worse now but we can build places that are better. We can place, make places that are more productive, have better soils, have more diversity, have more wildlife, more habitat, uh, because of real thoughtful interaction with those places. And so I want kids to be empowered to be able to take a look at a, a space and say, well, we could, we could change the space and we could make it better.